Welcome to Mind Mapping. We hope this course gives you some great information about how you can increase your creativity and ability to absorb new information. Download your workbook, kick off your shoes, and get ready to learn something new. Course Objectives. In this course, you'll learn the definition of a mind map, why mind mapping is so popular, how mind mapping is similar to how we think, important concepts in mind mapping, how to identify the difference between right and left brain thinking, specifically how to mind map, and then applications for using mind maps. What is mind mapping? Mind mapping is one of the easiest and most enjoyable ways to generate and document information that can then be discussed, evaluated, and prioritized. It is now widely recognized as the single most effective and versatile thinking and creativity tool used throughout the world. Mind mapping is a useful technique that improves the way you take notes, brainstorm an issue, or document your thoughts. It supports and enhances your creative problem solving. Mind mapping is a technique used to maximize creativity. It is also called dimensional note taking because it represents information visually. Mind mapping supports and enhances creativity and problem solving and records information in a visual and sensory manner. Why use mind maps? Mind maps abandon the list format of conventional note taking. They do this in favor of a two dimensional structure. Mind maps show the shape of a subject, the relative importance of individual points, and the way in which facts relate to one another. They use shapes, colors, and dimensions as visual stimulus, further adding to this power of this simple tool. Mind maps are more compact than conventional note taking, often taking up just one side of paper. This helps to make the associations easily. And if you find out more information after you've drawn the initial mind map, it's easy to add more information in. Mind maps also help to maximize creativity, concentration, and mental agility. They document how ideas progress through the information communicated. Mind maps removes these difficulties and allows rapid expansion and exploration of an idea resulting in a clear and concise picture or map of all of its relative interlinked points. How we think. On the left you see a picture of a brain with all its connections and synapses. On the right you see a mind map. The thing that is most striking about this is that the mind map is constructed in a format that mimics how our brain connects thoughts and images. We don't think in one dimension linear manner. We think in connected thoughts. Mind maps are visually drawn and depict connected thoughts. This is just how we think. Here's some important concepts for mind mapping. Mind maps are visual depictions of how our brains work. Taking notes using mind mapping helps us to be more creative and thorough. Visual documentation of information increases creativity and mental agility. Using pictures, symbols, and colors helps to integrate both sides of our brain. Using a mind map allows for individual information to be added after the fact. And finally, mind maps are fun and can be done in a group. Tony Buzon. Although people have been creating mind maps using an image-centered radiographic technique for centuries, British psychologist and author Tony Buzon has made claim to the origin of a mind map. He argues that traditional outlines require the reader to scan information from left to right and top to bottom, while the brain's natural preference is to scan the entire page in a nonlinear fashion. Buzan also uses assumptions that the hemispheres of our brain promote the exclusive use of mind maps over the form of lateral note taking. Buzan popularized the mind map concept in the early 70s based on his observations that our brains do not process information in a linear way. Mind mapping allows us to work using words, images, colors in a much more effective way to engage both sides of our brain. Early mind mapping. Mind maps have been around for many years. They've been used for brainstorming, learning, visual thinking, and problem solving by all types of professions. The first known use of mind mapping, or something akin to mind mapping, dates back to the 3rd century BC. A holistic philosopher and noted thinker of his time is claimed to have used the earliest examples of mind mapping to convey concepts, ideas, and meanings. He applied mind mapping to visualize Aristotle's concepts of categories. The striking point here is that mind mapping was authoritative enough to be put in early books. 
the visualization method made it easier to grasp the complex thinking of someone like Aristotle and encourage decision and problem solving surrounding a focal subject. Our brains have two sides, left and right. Depending on how you're wired, you are either more left-brained or more right-brained. Roll your mouse over the different halves of the brain to observe the different characteristics of both a left and right-brained person. The left is more logical, loves math, while the right is more feeling and artistic. The truth is, is that we use both sides of our brains all the time. We just tend to favor one over the other. How to mind map. First, you start in the center with an image of a topic. Have at least three colors. Use images and symbols and codes, dimensions throughout your mind map. Select keywords and print using upper and lowercase letters. Each word and image must be alone and sitting on its own line. Lines must be connected starting from the central image. Make the lines the same length as the word. Use colors or make up your own code throughout your mind map. Develop your own personal style. Use emphasis, show associations, and keep the mind map clear by using a radial hierarchy. Here's an example of a mind map that's used to explain how to mind map. Here's another mind map example. I like this one because it was really intense and very in-depth and beautifully done. Lots of colors and pictures and um, just really fun to look at. Let's go over where you can use mind mapping. You can use it just about anywhere, but it comes in most handy when you're taking notes, can be used as a team building activity, to brainstorm new ideas, as a means of working through tough issues in an artistic and playful way, and then finally as an exercise for left brainers to appreciate us right brainers. I've used mind mapping in team building activities where instead of having them draw pictures, I passed out magazines and let them cut things out of the magazines. People just really have a good time with this. It's a lot of fun. Well, we've come to the end of our short course on mind mapping. And so in this course, you've learned the definition of a mind map, why it's so popular, how mind mapping is similar to how we think, the important concepts in mind mapping, how to identify the differences between right and left brain thinking, how to mind map, and finally, places that you can use mind mapping.